Chapter 3, Lesson 4, Slope-Intercept Form. You will be able to graph linear equations using the slope and y-intercept. Non-proportional linear relationships can be written in the form of y equals mx plus b. This is called the slope-intercept form. When an equation is written in this form, m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. It's called slope-intercept form because you can see the slope and the y-intercept. State the slope and y-intercept of the graph of the equation y equals 2 thirds x minus 4. If m is the slope, and m is the coefficient of x, the number before x. The number before x in this problem is our slope. So our slope is 2 thirds. Our y-intercept, where it intersects the y-axis, is the number that's by itself, which is negative 4. So the y-intercept is negative 4. Letter B. Again, we're stating the slope and y-intercept. The slope is the coefficient, and the y-intercept is the number by itself. So our slope is negative 5. The y-intercept is 3. Number 3. The slope is the coefficient of x, and the y-intercept is the number by itself. So slope is 1 fourth, and y-intercept is negative 6. Letter D. The slope is the coefficient, which here is just a negative sign. We'll talk about that in a moment. And our y-intercept is the number by itself. Now, the y-intercept is 5. But the slope is a negative sign. It's not negative x, but there's an invisible number there. And that invisible number is negative 1. So the slope is negative 1. Complete the following problems. Write an equation of a line in slope-intercept form with a slope of negative 3 and a y-intercept of negative 4. We are still going to use our equation y equals mx plus b. We need to replace our m with slope and our b with our y-intercept. So we then get an equation of y equals negative 3x minus 4. Letter B, we're writing an equation from a graph. In this problem, they give us the y-intercept is 4, but we have to find the slope. And we're going to find our slope with rise over run. We are given two points, one here and one here. To get from the first point to the second point, we're going down one, right two, which would be negative one, positive two. Our slope is negative one half. Now that we have our slope and y-intercept, we can write an equation. Again, using y equals mx plus b, where we substitute in our m value, our slope, which is negative one-half, x, and our y-intercept, which is positive four. So our equation is y equals negative one-half x 
plus 4. Write an equation in slope-intercept form for the graph shown. Our y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis, and that is at this point, which is, if I start at the origin, negative 2. So our y-intercept, or our b value, is negative 2. Our slope, or m value, we need to find rise over run. We have two points already given to us, one here, one here. Our rise, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so up 5. And our run, 1, 2, 3, so up 5 over 3. It's okay that it's improper. Leave it that way. We want a fraction. <clears throat> We again are using y equals mx plus b, where we replace m with our slope and b with our y-intercept. Our slope, or rise over run, is 5 over 3, bring down the x, and our y-intercept, or b value, is negative 2. So the equation is y equals 5 thirds x minus 2. When an equation in slope-intercept form applies to a real-world situation, the slope represents the rate of change, and the y-intercept represents the initial value, the starting amount, the flat fee, the amount that never changes, the constant. So step one, we have to find the slope in the y-intercept. Step two, we graph the y-intercept. And step three, we use the slope to determine the rise over run. So let's see what we're talking about here. <clears throat> Student Council is selling t-shirts during Spirit Week. It costs $20 for the design and $5 to print each shirt. The $20 for the design would be our y-intercept and $5 to print each shirt would be our slope. And that is shown right here, 5x plus 20. So the cost y so I know cost is the y-axis, to print x shirts, so shirts is the x-axis, is given by y equals 5x plus 20. Graph y equals 5x plus 20 using the slope and y-intercept, then interpret the slope and y-intercept. So let's label our graph here. We know that the y-axis is the cost, and we know that the x-axis are the shirts, the number of shirts. And we should always have a title. Uh, we are talking about student council t-shirts, so we can just say t-shirt sales. <clears throat> now, our slope and y-intercept. Our slope, our m value is 5. And I'm going to write that as a fraction. That tells me my direction is up 5, right 1, because they are both positive numbers. I go up and to the right when it's positive. Our y-intercept is 20. So now we need to label our graph with some values. Shirts, we can count by ones. <clears throat> so here would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, and write those values in. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. <clears throat> Okay, now the cost. I know I have to begin at 20, so I need to have 20 somewhere on here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a break in the graph. <clears throat> Just so I use most of my graph. And then I'm going to start at 20. Whenever you don't start at 0, you need to put a break in the graph. 
Now, I know my slope is up 5 over 1, so I'm going to count by 5s. 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, and 70. I'll fix that 2 down there. Okay. <clears throat> now, everything's labeled, we know our slope, we know our y-intercept. We always begin with our y-intercept, B for begin. We're going to begin at 20. And the slope tells us positive 5, positive 1, or up 5, right 1. So we're going to go up 5, right 1, up 5, right 1. And continue that pattern until you get a few points on the graph. Once you have a few points, draw a line. And that is how we graph a line. Letter B. A taxi fare Y can be determined by the equation Y equals 0.50x plus 3.50, where x is the number of miles traveled. <clears throat> Graph the equation and interpret the slope and y-intercept. Well, I know that the slope is the number or coefficient next to x. So 0 0.50 is the slope. The y-intercept is positive 350. Well, the taxi fare is y, so let's label the y-axis with taxi fare. And x is the number of miles traveled, so we can say number of miles. A title, We are talking about, really, the cost of a taxi per mile, so I would stick with taxi fare, and you can write per mile. <clears throat> okay. I know that the slope is 0 0.50. And again, put it over 1. That means I go up 0.5 and write 1 because they are positive. Our y-intercept is 3.50. Our number of miles, we can count by 1's again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. <clears throat> and we're beginning at 3.5 and we're counting up by 0.5 with our, with our slope. So I'm going to put another break in the graph. Otherwise, my graph would be just up here and I want to fill most of my grid here. So I'm going to put a break in the graph and we're going to start at 3.50 and count by 50 cents. And just to save some room here, I'm going to skip and add a dollar each time. So 450, 550, 650, 750, and 850. Now I begin at 350. I'm going up 50 cents, right one mile. Up 50 cents, right one mile. And again, continue to do that until you have a few points. 
and then draw your line. Make sure you draw your line through the graph. <clears throat> now this says to interpret the slope and y-intercept. We're talking about taxi fare. So the slope, which is 0 0.50, represents the cost per mile. The y-intercept of 3.50 represents an initial amount or the set fee, so the flat fee. And if we go back to A for a moment, it also says to interpret the slope and y-intercept, which I forgot. So our slope, which is 5, represents the cost per shirt. The y-intercept, which is 20, represents the cost of the design. <clears throat>